concerned about the effect this subject will have upon my daughter. Instead, let's arrange for her to marry you in a few years. Elizabeth, I want you to accompany the boy. Take care of him. You know, play doctor and stuff. Also, Dustin Hoffman was apparently unavailable to play the old man with a long, dark wig and a red coat and a white scarf. We find out later that the medallion calls to the dead pirates on the Black Pearl, so why are they just sailing in the fog like a myth right now? Nobody on board except Elizabeth sees this ship that is literally like a hundred yards away and clearly visible. Jack steps off the boat with his right leg, but his left leg hits the dock first. This is some truly terrible formation shit right here. These lines aren't even remotely straight. What? Have they never practiced these before? Have they not seen the opening to A Few Good Men? Elizabeth is about to faint from the corset, but decides to stand right on the edge of the fort wall. Shoot him! First, the governor wants to shoot Jack on sight without knowing who he is or what he's done. Then, when he finds out Jack is a pirate, he wants to hang him. Why the change? Hang him! To delay Jack's death so he can escape later? Yeah, that seems like protocol. Just handcuff a guy and leave him unattended next to the rich girl. Scene does not contain a lap dance. Soldiers approach Jack from the front, even though all of them are behind him. Now will you shoot him? Will you make up your f***ing mind? We didn't shoot him before because you said hang him, remember? This guy's closing his eyes while firing, this guy's got his head turned completely to the side, and this guy appears to be three feet tall. Take cover, man! What? Take cover from what? The single guy in chains running away from all the soldiers? Mr. Sparrow has a dawn appointment with the gallows. But I thought the order was to shoot him now. Will Turner's facial hair goes from this to this in a few hours. The go calls to us. Except when it's in a drawer, or right next to them in the beginning of the movie. Cal Drogo would totally have kicked Legolas's ass had it not been for this fortunate sign falling incident. No. Why would the pirates care if she dropped it? Can they not just jump right in after it and grab it? I mean, the ship's still in the harbor, right? Will Turner is a dick to maps. Hurry! Someone will have heard that. Why? They haven't heard anything else. If you're gonna do this, you might as well not even try to hide. This is way more suspicious than if you were just out in the open walking around. Will and Jack must have the strength of a hundred men to pull a f***ing boat down completely underwater along with a pocket of air. How did their clothes dry so fast? The British dude seriously left not one single guy on this ship? Not one dude? Is it naval policy to abandon ship completely when you search other ships for two f***ing criminals? This guy had no chance and he knew it before he swung. I think he was just tired of working and wanted to take a dip. This tiny boat explodes from the impact of the Dauntless well before the Dauntless ever actually touches it. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. Inferior officer rubs it in the face of his superior. Also, the Black Pearl came to town and destroyed all kinds of shit, but left two of the best ships in the fleet completely alone? Pig pillows. The pirates kidnap girls so often they have this whole skeletons running the ship routine thing that's all choreographed and everything. These mostly drunk pirate losers have better alignment and timing than the f***ing British soldiers do. Where is all this light coming from if not the moon? And if it's moonlight, why aren't they showing their true skeleton nature? Keep us steady, man! Dude, he's not even the one driving. Are we really supposed to believe Jack Sparrow saw this cannon being fired 20 feet away and the cannonball coming right at him but still had time to duck? Will somehow not only survives the ship explosion but then also manages to swim over 100 yards in a matter of seconds. Despite not knowing how Jack escaped the last time, Barbosa figures putting Jack on the same island will do the trick this time. So when did they fix the door to this prison cell? Because this is the same cell they put Jack in, and then during the attack it was damaged. Never sat well with Bootstrap what we did to Jack Sparrow. The two bumbling idiot pirates are reduced to being exposition vessels. People and ghosts are really good at walking underwater in this movie. Jack shoots Barbosa before the coins and Will's blood go into the treasure chest, meaning Barbosa shouldn't have any flesh that a bullet could do any damage to. If this is supposed to all of a sudden kill Barbosa, shouldn't Jack have a gaping wound from being stabbed with a sword before? Shouldn't all the dead pirates have wounds that magically show up that they didn't notice because they were all dead already? This putting the eye back in thing was cute and funny when he was dead, but now that he's alive again, how is he able to put it back in and control it? Bumbling idiot pair number one, meet bumbling idiot pair number two. Who the f*** is this cowboy? End credit scene no one stays for because no one expects an end credit scene for a movie based on a theme park ride. Also, the stone lid on this chest is clearly closed in this shot, but somehow magically open for the monkey to reach in and steal some gold in the next shot. Slow motion rain to set the mood cliche. That's a horse on a boat right there. Why is this happening? I don't know. Surely it has nothing to do with all the illegal pirate things I did in the last movie. I think it's bad luck for the groom to see the bride before the wedding. Would you movies please stop saying this in every f***ing wedding scene in every movie ever created? The warrant for the arrest of one William Turner. This warrant is for Elizabeth Swan. You sailed here without any knowledge that you needed to also arrest Elizabeth Swan? You have three arrest warrants. Did you mistake the other two for suggestions? The charge is conspiring to set free a man convicted of crimes against the crown and empire. I know news in general things traveled slower back in the day than they do now, but how long has it been since the first movie? They just decided William and Elizabeth were fugitives after probably months and months during the time this wedding was planned? Perhaps you remember a certain pirate named Jack Sparrow. Captain! <sighs> Flying birds signify danger cliche. Jack Sparrow is a dick to birds. Complications arose, ensued. 
We're overcome. Must have been a fantastic adventure. Too bad we didn't get to see it. But what do keys do? Keys unlock things? Get to the goddamn adventure already. Some of you've already skipped to go long on this Saturday Night Live skit. Thunder and Lightning let you know something ominous is coming. Why is the rum always gone? For sheer shout-outs to the original movie, I guess. And to what do I owe the pleasure of your carbuncle? He sent me. No, no, she sent you. And they are not amused, and he's not too happy about that. Any idea when Jones might release said terrible beastie? I already told you, Jack. The time is up. That's why I waited down here for so long, because I knew you'd just randomly show up down here and we could finally have this conversation. It comes now, drawn with ravenous hunger, to the man what bears the black spot. It couldn't just come here right this second because it's vacationing in Mexico. The Kraken will be drawn with ravenous hunger to the man with the black spot. And anyone who wears the same hat as the man with the black spot. Yes, Pirates of the Caribbean fans, you can relive all the greatest hits of the last movie in this 150-minute extravaganza. How did Jack Sparrow become the leader of this island people? Probably a good story, but we don't get to see it. Instead, the movie wants us to see the rather unexciting adventure of how Will Turner got to the island. Lom say say unike. Sip step. That first movie was hilarious. Save me! Um, couldn't you have told me how to do that before telling the natives whatever you told them to take me away right now? Leering rapey guys. Captain? Captain? Jeez, how long does it take to stab somebody? Dude's been standing here like that for 20 seconds. No doubt you've discovered that loyalty is no longer the currency of the realm, as your father believes. How does he know that she's in here? Just because the box was obviously opened? That could have been her dad, and he doesn't even know she's escaped yet. Elizabeth Swan looks absolutely dynamite for being a prisoner for so long. Did they let her do her hair in prison? And why does she still have her wedding dress on? Look! There it is! It took Will Turner some detective work to find the Black Pearl. It took these guys general paddling around after escaping prison to find it. See, the Pelagostos believe that Jack is a god in human form. They'll roast him and eat him. How long has this relationship between Jack and the natives been going on? Just long enough for Will Turner to show up and save him? Irony. Oh, bugger. Damn, those assholes were quiet. Come on, men! It'll take all of us to throw the Black Pearl! Why would you say this? About six would do! Oh, that's why. Oh. This guy had to run to the ceremony to tell everyone about the prisoners instead of just taking care of it himself. It's not like Will Turner and the rest can get out of the cage so easily. This, of course, opens the door for the Jack Sparrow escape. <laughs> Hilarious Cannibal Kid is so eager to eat Jack, he already has a knife and fork out. Isn't that adorable? And cinnable. The natives haven't caught up to these guys running in a cage yet. Good God, man, I could have caught up to them from here before these guys could. Movie steals part of the opening scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Also, with the sheer number of spears being thrown and arrows flung, don't you think one of these guys would have gotten shafted by now? When we last left Jack, we saw a dude ready to kick his ass hard. Instead, he and the others in this scene resorted to throwing fruits and vegetables at Jack instead of doing anything remotely logical. Robert! They understand this. No, 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 no. And then everyone decides they need to leave these prisoners to go back to Jack, who is still tied up and can be subdued by one person, but f*** it. You want me to feel like these characters are in danger, but this kind of stuff proves they're never in danger. You might as well have shown Jack being cooked and eaten, and then have him find a way to escape through the natives' digestive tracts. I won't leave without him! Perfect timing. Jack, who spends most of his time drinking rum, pirating, and whoring around Tortuga, can somehow outrun natives on their home turf. But only as far as we keep to the shallows. So the Kraken can't attack as long as you're in shallow water? Then there was no reason for you to even go to that island if that's the case. Elizabeth is so certain the entire ship will believe this dress is from a ghost, she'll be able to leverage the situation to go to Tortuga. That's her actual plan, and it works! There's a female presence amongst us, yes, sir. All the men, they can feel it. They can probably also see the female presence. Yeah, this is like Clark Kent's disguise to me. This is the type of stupid shit that makes a movie two hours and 30 minutes. Oh, and uh, she's probably naked. Nope, because this is not the dangerous method. Or Domino. Also, probably naked? You give her credit for being a stowaway, but not clothe herself to blend in? Now that's the very question Jack once answered. Bad enough even to go visit her. Oh no, not her. Her. I... Okay, well, that about wraps up all the details I need to know about this person. Also, when we meet Tia Dalma, there is no danger or problems that arise or anything. She's nothing but helpful. Where is the little person that came along with them? He was part of that hilarious mind the boat chain just a minute ago, but now he's nowhere to be found. In carb ultimat. Lucky do we in a chest. And hide a chest from the world. Davy Jones' one weakness is buried exactly like Parallax. Davy Jones cannot make for it. Cannot step on land but once every ten years. But why? That's a completely arbitrary rule. And for how long can you step on land? An hour? A day? A year? 
So what's your plan then? Jack waits until they get within sight of the Flying Dutchman to ask Will what his plan is. Also, either the Flying Dutchman is on shallow water right now and Jack has completely lucked out, or this movie has completely forgotten that the Kraken's ravenous hunger should be leading it to the Black Pearl, since Jack still has the dark spot on his hand. Barrel of oil is handy for all your flaming sword needs. Okay, so he slices one of them, but then he just stands there for no reason after that, as if he's never seen anything unusual in this series before. How did this man who cut his heart out become a squid-lobster hybrid? I see the search for the female stowaway on this boat frantically continues. I'm afraid, sir, Tortuga is the only free port left in these waters. Hey, that's exactly where Jack Sparrow is going. No one sees this as a practical joke or even looks up to see if anyone could be controlling it. It must be ghosts. What's that over there? Much of the plot of this movie relies on people being too stupid to breathe. <laughs> Zany bar fight. I just wanted the pleasure of doing that myself. Yeah, that person who is obviously a man is my kind of guy. How does Mercer have the obvious female as obvious detector and every other man in this movie is stupid as hell? Phantom of the Dutchman. Why are all the crew of the Flying Dutchman heaping masses of peat moss and aquarium decorations, but Davy Jones and the Hammerhead Dude are clearly the results of Sid from Toy Story successfully mating humans with sea creatures? 100 years before the mast, losing you were, bit by bit, until you end up, end up like poor women. Great explanation! I can't wait to hear about the becoming a Hammerhead process. The key. Wait, this asshole can move? Get to work, you lazy bastard. The Dutchman needs a living heart. Or there'll be no captain, and if there's no captain, there's no one to have the key. I get the living heart part, but who cares if the captain holds a key or not? So the captain has the key. Oh, fuck you. Why did you even bother to come out of the wall with useful information if you weren't going to spill all of it? And what were you afraid of anyway? You're 98% boat at this point. I'm here to find the man I love. How does Jack not recognize her voice? You have news of her? Most recently seen on the island of Tortuga. Why didn't he just go ahead and capture them while he was down there? He didn't go alone, did he? He probably sailed over in a ship with several soldiers, right? Wondering how it's played? I understand. It's good that Will knows, but does the audience know the rules of Liar's Dice? If you don't, this next scene is going to make about as much sense as how that one guy turned into a hammerhead shark. How do you know of the key? Doesn't everyone know about it? What a wonderful world it is to be able to walk into an unlocked cabin and find the guy from whom you need to steal a key sleeping upright. This plan succeeds. Just put as many leaks behind us as you can. Damn, is this the only boat floating around in the Atlantic right now? Is this ship called the Coincidence? Last time we saw the Kraken, it buckled a ship in two seconds. Now that Will is on the ship the Kraken attacks, it's gonna take its sweet ass time. Why is it picking up individual guys off the boat and throwing them into the water? It could simply rip this boat in half and sink everyone right now. What awesome destruction. Still way slower than your average Kraken destruction though. How did he get this far away from the ship? Convenient man-sized flotsam also managed to make it all the way out here for Will to save himself. The boy's not here. He must have been claimed by the sea. Why did you bother sending the Kraken to do this job when you could have easily transported yourself and your crew over to the Coincidence and got the key back? You had no problem doing that with the Black Pearl earlier. Also, you found the Coincidence with virtually no problem. And I was assuming it was because you have some sort of magical attraction toward the key. But now you can't locate Will Turner right next to you in the water. God, I hope that's the last we see of this f***ing dress. You're going to want to know what it tastes like. Teasing. They're here. Well, it's a good thing you decided to come here when you did, getting here pretty much the exact same time they did. You actually were telling the truth. I do that quite a lot. Your people are always surprised. <laughs> With good reason. You did not hear that. Also, Davy Jones sent the Flying Dutchman underwater a minute ago when you were riding inside that dragon mouth thing. That must have come up rather unexpectedly, and I don't know how you survived or got away without being seen. Look, I want to kiss Kira Knightley too, but maybe this is the part where you warn them about Davy Jones being here instead of being such a selfish dick. Dick? I'm gonna kill Jones. Better do it soon, he's right around the corner, right? Right? 17th century reservoir dogs. Also, why did Jack bring Norrington to the beach? He could have chosen any member of his crew to help him dig, but he picked him. Because of the plot, I guess. Let's just pull out our swords and start banging away at each other! I like the cut of your jib, lady. When do we start? These two pirates decide to go with a little used running out in the open with stolen goods technique. Hey, look, the perfect castle on a deserted island to sword fight in. What are the odds? Also, this castle comes complete with a bell so that the bad guys can find out where everyone is. It's like this church or castle or whatever it is was built specifically for an action scene in this particular movie. Surprise asshole guy swings to the left of Jack for some reason and screams to give away his surprise. I know Will taught her how to use a sword and everything, but when did she become an expert who could fight undead bad guys like she's been doing it all her life? Why didn't this water wheel just steal Davy Jones' heart and board the Black Pearl? It obviously knows what needs to be done for the plot. Oh yeah, the heart must be in that jar of land Jack carries with him. It's so simple for me to figure that out immediately just by looking. Will just sits here while the fight rages on, somehow expecting not to get killed or something. Oh, I'm good. I need this guy is a dick to his head. Roger Starbuck. 
Since when do these two have the power to relay orders on the Black Pearl? Going for the slow death thing again, I see. Sure, about 95% of the main cast is on this ship. Why wouldn't you? Good thing the Kraken's tentacles line up perfectly with the cannons. Whatever you do, don't miss. Good advice! Why isn't the Kraken killing Jack right now? We were told that the guy with the black spot on his hand was the one that the Kraken has a ravenous hunger for. What the f***? Those tentacles must have discovered the cure for being blasted by cannon fire in two minutes flat. What the f*** is this dude doing on top of this thing? These tentacles randomly grab everyone except people who are main characters. <laughs> Couldn't save anyone else though, could you? How did he get up here? Don't you need help getting on a ship like this when you're on a small boat in the water? Well, that should stop the Kraken for a couple minutes. How is this ship even still sailing after all that nonsense? We can get away as it takes down the pearl. Is Davy Jones even watching any of this anymore? He should have caught up by now. And the Kraken should know, sense, see, or feel people getting on a longboat, right? I always knew you were a good man. Oh, come on. Talk about inventing conflict. And of course, this dickhead Will is in perfect I saw you kiss another man position. It's after you, not the ship. F*** you, if the Kraken was really after Jack, it would have taken that easy meal while he was rowing by himself a minute ago. Oh yeah, Davy Jones is in this. One of the ships did pick up a man adrift to sea. How did they find Norrington? How did he get into the water? There were no boats left behind when he was still on the island. Did he build one in a week using only a sword to cut lumber? We found the pardons, but somehow didn't see the bag full of heart he hid somewhere in his raggedy clothes. I took the liberty of filling in my name. Damn, this guard escorted Norrington into this room without a f***ing sound. If there was anything could be done to bring him back, would you do it? I knew At World's End was coming when this was released, so sure, this isn't one bit of a surprise, but there's seriously a way to bring someone back from getting eaten by a Kraken? At World's End. Roll credit. Oh, damn. Got ahead of myself. Captain Barbosa was just sitting upstairs waiting for Tia Dalma to spring that surprise. What if no one wanted to save Jack? Would he have just sat up there until they left? The director said, let's have your character eating an apple. It'll make you look like even more of a surprise asshole. Happy ending for the dog, I guess. Only because the movie ends before we see what really happens to him. They eat the leader, right? Sure, Disney, we have time for your meandering 30-second logo during this nearly three-hour film. We'll wait. All these hanging victims step forward willingly towards the noose in unison and without any prodding, as though they've read the script and wish to save themselves the trouble of seeing the rest of this mess. The hangmen allow this asshole kid to keep singing, instead of hanging him immediately for singing, or at least kicking him in the balls or something to shut him up. Wow, the movie goes full lay Miz before the four minute mark. They've started to sing, sir. Beckett needs to be told that the prisoners are singing, even though that's readily apparent via hearing. The movie dupes you into thinking the singing is over, but continues the same song unabated after the opening title. Too much singing! Dangerous song to be singing for any who are ignorant of its meaning, particularly a woman. That's sexually racist. What makes you think she's alone? Well, the fact that up until you spoke, she was alone and stuff. Also, maybe Barbosa heard that, but I'm wondering, if he was expecting Elizabeth to arrive here, why did he wait until she was in danger to show up? Wherever this gun was hidden, it simply means Will Turner has his work cut out for him when it comes to marital relations. Not Hilarious third movie of a bloated Not Hilarious franchise finds time for this scene somehow. He moved. Please. That's racist, sexist, and coincidentally exactly what I was hoping he'd say, which makes me racist, sexist. Also, I bet you didn't make Captain Barbosa do that. Oh man, they dragged Chow Yun Fat into this, didn't they? Has this asshole been underwater this entire time? Just for a cinematic reveal? Why is he not dead? Also, why did they try to get Will to steal the navigational charts if they could simply walk in and ask for them? I mean, Barbosa even has a magic you must honor this coin, and they bothered with Will trying to steal this stuff on his own? As one of the nine pirate lords. You must honor the call. Pirates have lords? I thought it was a pretty straightforward, casual version of a military, with a captain and a first mate. <laughs> Pirate code? Yes, I buy that. Pirate lords and some kind of constitution that they have to obey? Not so much. Yep, this movie is having one of the so-called good guys get a chuckle out of looking up Elizabeth's skirt. Because creeping and peeping is fun. You are so fang, the pirate lord of Singapore. Much needed exposition. And the pervy upskirt gag was all for the payoff of this guy having to look at sumo balls. Hilarious. Elizabeth Ward. There was more to you than meets the eye, isn't there? No, that's Optimus Prime you're thinking of. What is it you seek in Davy Jones' locker? Jack Sparrow. He's one of the pirate lords. Well, isn't that sh convenient and completely made up for this movie? Jack Sparrow holds one of the nine pieces of eight. Nine pieces of eight sounds just odd enough as a phrase that I have to wonder why the original pirate lords didn't make the council eight members for the sake of consistency. Somehow, when they hatched this plan, they knew the spaces between the floorboards would allow for a coordinated sword tossing. I mean, think about the planning here. 
How many times did Barbosa go into this room, finally deciding, you know what? Swords through the floorboards. It's almost too easy. How did this many British soldiers manage to get to the other side of a fucking dressing chamber divider without any guards spotting them? Swords versus gun battle is a lot more even than it has any right to be. Dickhead British soldiers decide to waste time getting into position in order to shoot the pirates. So they somehow knew exactly where the British soldiers were standing in that moment of chaotic battle and didn't get any good guys with this trick as well? This little guy firing this huge gun is worthless both for military strategy and comedic value. A whole lot of who gives a fuckness. You know what? Even if historically soldiers did this in every situation, I'm going to sin history. Here's another instance of some booby trap exploding exactly when the soldiers were in a spot no one could possibly predict they'd be in. It's an odd coincidence, isn't it? That you two ran into the same secluded area away from the battle that Beckett's main man Mercer just happens to be in right now so that he can overhear key information he needs to propel the plot? A monkey and a parrot team up to validate this movie's three hour runtime. Pirate Wilhelm. I'm sure there must be a good reason for our suffering. Character speaks for the viewing audience. Why don't that Obey woman just bring Jack back the same way she brought back Barbosa? Because Barbosa was only dead. You're right, Tia. How stupid it is for them to think just because you did one impossible thing, you could do a completely other impossible thing. Person can bring back himself. I do not care about one word coming out of this woman's mouth. And some say it signals when a soul comes back to this world from the dead. So a green flash means someone's come back into this world from the dead. Question though, did those people also have an entire ship full of people looking for them complete with these rare navigational charts to help them get out? Or did they get out on good behavior? Also, listen, Disney, the supernatural bullshit was not what people enjoyed about the first Pirates movie. It was the zany, swashbuckling fun. So tripling down on the supernatural bullshit was a dumb idea. Pirates of the Caribbean, the day after tomorrow. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting one of this franchise's characters has an undead barnacle father who sails on a ship with a squid captain that plays the organ. Also, he's technically playing that organ with his face. I'm just saying. These assholes haven't been fired yet. Why is this movie three hours long? Because the director insisted on every single establishing shot being a 10 second orgy of nothingness. How long do we continue not talking? You mean they're still giving each other the silent treatment after he saw her kissing Jack in the last movie? You mean she hasn't once explained herself? I guess when you need tension for a movie, those things happen. For what do you want? Just when Will is about to run and tell Barbosa the ship's in danger, Tia shows up out of nowhere to give him some sort of vague platitude. Then he runs to tell Barbosa what he was going to tell him before. But why is the movie interrupted even a little bit for Tia to say this thing that could be said at any time? It's actually confusing, because it seems like Will is running because of what she says, not because of what he saw out in the water. For what we want most, there is a cost must be paid in the end. Super in your face foreshadowing is super in your face. For certain, you have to be lost to find a place that can't be found. Sure, sure, I get it. But you could also just be lost in a place that's nowhere near where you need to be. Besides, how in the world did people who came through here before not map this place out? Also, seems like the people who successfully navigated the Davy Jones locker expedition would have made mention of a fucking waterfall. 19 seconds of black screen. They told Johnny Depp he was still in fear and loathing in Las Vegas. This was the result. It's pretty obvious the thought was, you know what's better than Jack Sparrow? Two Jack Sparrows! And why should we stop there? Jack Sparrow lays an egg. Why aren't you people laughing at this comic gold? Almost seven full minutes of nonsensical Jack Sparrow afterlife bullshit that means absolutely nothing to anything. We have lost speed and therefore time. Precious time, which cannot be recovered once lost. This advice went unheeded by the movie itself. It's pretty obvious the thought was, you know what's better than one rock that's actually a crab? Two rocks that are actually crabs, and why should we stop there? This truly is a godforsaken place. You mean a beach? Yeah, it looks awful. Witty Jack is closer than you think. Well, that was easy. Also, how do you sail the boat to Davy Jones' locker and run right into Jack? Is he the only person in this purgatory? How are they not running into millions of people right now? Impossible. Really? You just took a boat to purgatory and you're still hanging on to that impossible sh Four of you have tried to kill me in the past. One of you succeeded. Oh. She's not told you. Yeah, for some reason. Even though it's been months, maybe even a year since it happened. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, what are you doing? What are you doing? Skip. This is shit that could have been resolved long ago. Skip. Holy shit. I skipped to this part and it's still unresolved. Why was Jack allowed to wander around the beach while these people were relegated to the water like they're in the dead marshes? And every 10 years, him could come ashore to be with she who love him. I'm talking about myself, but much like Obi-Wan Kenobi, I don't see Darth Vader as Anakin Skywalker, and I sure as don't see me as myself. It's my father, we've made it back. Okay, sending this for her dead father being one of the six dead person rowboats close enough to the Pearl to make out faces. That's a deadly coincidence. Elizabeth, are you dead? Tia just said that those dead people only see them as ghosts, so why is he reacting right now? Is it so she and we would feel a lot better about his death? I learned that if you stab the heart, 
yours must take its place. Wow, this dead guy just dropped a fantastic plot point on the main characters as he's being carried into the unknown. Just imagine if they didn't see him in that sea of dead people. A torch of destiny. Voodoo Chick says this immediately after Elizabeth's dad states that the Dutchman must have a captain, further underscoring the obvious earlier foreshadowing you obviously didn't take to heart. No water. Why is all but the rum gone? Classic Pirates of the Caribbean. Hands on hips, shaking my head. Far outside Davy Jones' locker, Jack hears and sees literal tiny Jack Angel demons offering conflicting advice. What the f***? The Dutchman must have a captain. Whenever the movie is stuck, you can rest assured it will find a way to waste time. Come sunset, it won't matter. Not sunset. Hallucination ex machina. Not sunset. Sundown. Is there a difference between the two? Here, let me suck on your fake eye before you put it back in. We're rocking the ship! I don't need to ask questions. Seems like a great idea. Also, all the people who have ever escaped Davy Jones' locker did this? That doesn't seem possible. What if a smaller crew came to save someone and couldn't rock the boat? I guess they're screwed. How are they supposed to know that, though? Also, when this works, will someone write all this down so that it'll be easier for others to escape? Seems like the right thing to do. They won't, because after this movie, no one we care about will ever go to the DJL. Also, while I'm at it, who first learned to do this? Because someone solved it completely on their own. They got their crew to rock the boat willingly, on the off chance it would work. And then they were assholes, and simply left a riddle instead of full-blown instructions. Telescope measuring contest? There's never a guarantee of coming back. But passing on, that's dead certain. Unless Tia Dalma brings you back from the dead because she knows magic. Yeah, but do they somehow have dry gunpowder? Earlier, everyone was trying to shoot each other and couldn't because the powder was wet. That would presumably include all these pirates from Singapore, right? Am I missing something? I need the pearl to free my father. Seriously, from the time the Black Pearl was built until now, nobody built a ship that rivaled its speed. The whole reason Will betrays Jack is because he needs this one ship. For real. And if Davy Jones were to learn of your survival... How does he not know this already? Shouldn't some disturbance in the force alert into locker escapes? Were I in a divulgatory mood, what then might I divulge? This scene is an excellent example of why this movie sucks balls. Instead of a short deal-making scene, this conversation is dragged out unnecessarily into a 10-minute snooze fest. I actually heard there's no footage from this movie on the cutting room floor. They used everything they shot. And what did the bad friend have? Calypso. Yeah, who could it be? Since we've seen Tia Dalma twice look down at a locket and talk about pain and loss and shit. By the way, during the last movie, when she was telling everyone the story of Davy Jones, why did she look so happy telling it? I mean, they shot these movies at the same time, so it wasn't like they forgot and just made it up for this movie. Or did they? Cut out the middleman, as it were. The scene is still going on! With me killed, you'd arrive at the cove, find it's a stronghold nigh impregnable, and then you'd be wishing, oh, if only there was someone I had not killed inside. This somehow works, despite the power of the military Beckett has at his fingertips. Besides, why can't he just get to Shipwreck Cove before the Brethren Court gets there? And why does Beckett trust anything Jack says? Send this pestilent, traitorous, cow-hearted, yeasty codpiece to the brink. Jack Sparrow, lover of all things scoundrel and pirate, is so mad at Will for having ulterior motives for rescuing him, he undoes years of friendship, despite having himself double-crossed Will a nigh-uncountable number of times prior to this. Kiss rape. Dutchman X Machina. With all nine pieces of hate, will be free. With no evidence whatsoever, Sal Feng believes Elizabeth is Calypso, and gives her an item and crucial information for the plot. And her ex-boyfriend, who is still in love with her, is on the Dutchman right now. So he saves her, and what a bunch of lucky breaks. I did not know. Know what? Which side you chose? I'm already annoyed that this asshole is still in these movies, long after his storyline should have ended. But giving him a change of heart, now a good guy arc, is even worse. This guy's original motivation in these films was how bad he wanted to marry Elizabeth and sex her, and not in a romantic kind of way. But suddenly, he's got heart. Yay, I guess. Bootstrap. Uh. Bill Turner. Bootstrap. Oh, he just happened to be in the very cell that you are? That was easy. Will is killing dudes just so he can drop them into the ocean, and the birds will leave a trail for Beckett to follow. What's lost in all this is that Will is killing people just to leave trails. This cold-blooded motherfucker is a hero? Our destinies have been entwined, Elizabeth, but never joined. Is this a pity kiss? She just sort of allows this, doesn't she? Elizabeth freaks the hell out over the death of a guy she just told could never earn her forgiveness. Shocked? Maybe. Upset? Sure. But she's acting like they were active lovers. Like this is Will or some shit. Screw the movie for trying to slap together a hero's death for this dick-faced Norrington. <laughs> I admit, that's pretty damn funny. I'll knock a sin off. Why not? Don't you forget why you had to bring me back. There are way too many deals to keep up with in this movie. And almost all of them end up in some sort of double crossing. So who cares what deal is in place with whom? I showed them how to bind her. It was an easy process. I just showed them some YouTube videos. She pretended to love me. What am I doing with my life? 
She betrayed me! The tea drinking in this scene is a good substitute for eating apples. So the director said, take a drink of tea every time you say something to piss Davy Jones off. It'll make you look like even more of an asshole. There is only one price I will accept. Calypso. Margot. Why didn't you just do that in the first place? Instead, you went through the whole binder into human form punishment, which is like total bullshit, man. Pirates of the Caribbean, the desolation of Smaug. Master Regatti, if you will. What possessed Barbosa to one day long ago give his one-eyed sailor the wooden eye that is so important to this movie's plot? What if he got thrown overboard or burned in one of those twilight fires? He entrusted something very important to this dude instead of just giving him an eye patch. This is some bullshit concocted by the writers to turn a silly part of the franchise into something way more important than it should be. I'm as content as a cucumber to wait until Sao Fang joins us. Sao Fang is dead. I'm pretty sure you didn't hear that, but what wonderful timing to just be able to walk in a room and be able to answer that very question at this exact moment. You weren't. There. Why weren't you there? The last two movies' plots almost entirely rely on young lovers having some sort of misunderstanding and never asking one simple question that could have fixed it all. Instead of simply asking this question in the first place, he decided to get pirate lords to bind her to a human body. If he can do this, how did the other thing happen? By the way, how did nine pirate dudes capture a goddess in the first place? Did they put out Reese's Pieces and have her follow them into a trap? I bet they put out Reese's Pieces and had her follow them into a trap. So Johnny Depp says he patterned his Jack Sparrow in some way out of Keith Richards. So here he is, despite taking some of the mystique out of Depp's performance by actually casting the guy who inspired it, like a magician revealing a secret. Also, where's the other part of the equation? Peppy Le Pew. Also, am I really being asked to care about Jack Sparrow's daddy issues in the third f***ing movie? Because I don't, I can't, and I won't. <laughs> because he's a famous guitar player. <laughs> Am I to understand that you lot will not be keeping to the code then? They've been here for 12 minutes of this movie, and we still have another hour left. Also, this whole voting thing brings up another horrible aspect of TV shows and movies that start explaining its mythology way too far, to the point that basically lawless characters have rules and kings and queens and all sorts of stupid shit that doesn't make any sense. It's like Twilight and True Blood when you find out vampires follow some sort of hierarchy. What a bunch of bullshit. And so, we shall go to war. F this guy. As mum. I mean... See? Do we need Jack Sparrow to be explained in this way? This comes off totally cheap. This is the midi-chlorians of Pirates of the Caribbean. As if this movie needed any more length, when it's time to negotiate, the parties decide to land on opposite sides of a long island, in which the entire walk towards each other will be shown for our amusement. Sure, throw him the compass. This can't possibly help him against you later. Bravo! Well, here's some more of this shit. This movie is just downright exhausting. The movie tells viewers what it needs to do in order to enjoy it. Calypso! I release you from your human bonds. No, no, you didn't say it right. Sure, let's stall this movie even further. Hell, Barbosa himself said you had to say it to her as if to a lover. But then he f***s it up five seconds later. I release you from your human bonds. Why is this guy able to say the words and it works? Doesn't it need to be a pirate lord? Hasn't everything relied on pirate lord bullshit so far? Movie steals the 50-foot woman from... A movie I can't think of right now, but it was this movie about the attack of the 50-foot woman. When a huge woman explodes into millions of crabs, that's probably a sign the infection has gone too far. You will listen to me. Rousing speech time! Hey, one thing they forgot to do with this movie is give us a reason to care. This ain't William Wallace talking about getting their freedom and shit. This is a bunch of lawless pirates, and for the life of me, I can't figure out how the world is a better place if any of them survive. So they will see free men and freedom! Oh, shit. I guess I spoke too soon. So this is all about their freedom? To loot and plunder? What the f*** are pirates in these movies anymore? Just because the East India Company is evil doesn't make these assholes Robin Hood. Calypso. Is she in the sky now? Did she not just turn into a billion or so crabs and dive into the sea? What was the point of that sh**? Arc. It is perhaps fitting that one of the final battles will take place in an abyss of rapidly rotating water, because it simulates the effect of being in a toilet. She's on our stern and gaining! How? This is the vaunted Black Pearl you betrayed Jack for in order to go after your father, remember? Ship that's faster than the Dutchman, as I recall? Well, barrel inches. Leverage. Jack Sparrow once again Dr. Houses his way into a solution. Why is this thing even in the cell? If there were no fish people, there'd be no need to guard the chest. Why do these films think we still like these two asshats? Their act wore thin two movies ago. Once again, an unstoppable force like the Flying Dutchman, which we've seen blowing up entire waves of pirate ships in seconds, suddenly starts getting its ass kicked by the Black Pearl, because heroes. <laughs> Bullshit. So can these guys be- oh, f*** it. Marius! For Christ's sake. Dearly beloved, we be gathered here today. Skip! And then I skipped, and they just got to the kiss. I don't know, you guys finding this wedding during a sea battle thing funny? I think much like the Captain Jack back in the prison cell, I lost my brain somewhere. Also, these two do everything without talking it out. They fought and did a whole movie's worth of silent treatment without talking it out, then they just got back together again without talking that out. I mean, I might have to add 10 sins for this. 
By the way, does Davy Jones have any reason to fear Jack's sword during this battle? We already had the pretty good joke where Norrington tried to stab him, and Jones looked at him like he was stupid. So why doesn't he just bum rush Jack and take the chest? Also, this is one of these fights where it feels like if the Black Pearl is winning, then the whole battle is won somehow, despite the East India Company having a billion ships elsewhere in these waters. But we'll forget about that lopsided affair as long as the Black Pearl wins. <sighs> I mean, do our comic relief heroes know exactly where to shoot this monkey? <laughs> Holy sh! they know exactly where to shoot this monkey! It's official. The first Pirates movie was good on accident. Since it's clear by this third movie, the creators have no idea what made the first one popular. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean, at world's end, should have been called the never-ending story. It's amazing how in all this confusing battle, things important to the plot just happen to be close to the heroes whenever they need them. William. Oh, now you remember this is your son. Nice timing, dickwad. At this point, we're pretty much aware that Jack Sparrow can do anything he wants with the boat's sail ropes. It's hit critical mass in this movie, and holy sh**, is that a parachute? Yeah, Marge is still out there. Yeah, no sh**. But what have they been doing this whole time? Have they sat back and watched the Dutchman and the Pearl duke it out while drinking tea or some sh**? So the Endeavor has cannons on both sides. Are they not going to get anybody in position to fire them? Are they just going to allow this to happen? They're turning away! Yay! One ship goes down and the whole armada gives up. Woohoo! On the wheel then, Mr. Turner. This ship had no one at the wheel until this moment. It's one of those ship jobs that isn't really necessary, which kind of makes Will a dick for giving that worthless, needless job to his own father. Once is quite enough. Haha, <laughs> that's really funny, Jack. But this time there isn't a Kraken around, and that's f***ing Keira Knightley. You just lost cool points, bro. It's at moments like these that I start thinking, wait a minute, all Calypso did was create an abyss and make it rain for a while. That's it. She was completely worthless to this story, despite her overall importance to this story. God, that was freaking awful. This movie never ends. Oh, it ended. Splendid. Holy shit, it didn't end. It's even more movie. You can't be around for all the massive amounts of fucking we're going to do that will likely result in one of your siblings. Apparently pirates have overthrown Cinderella's kingdom and have commenced with the traditional Friday night fireworks show. Should we send them for 46 seconds of logos at this point? Ah, why the fuck not? <gasps> How long was that fucker underwater anyway? And what luck? Two random fishermen come along and catch him in their net. If they hadn't come by when they did, he probably only would have had another 24 hours underwater before he died. Not to be confused with Cadiz, Kentucky. Wait, there is a Cadiz, Kentucky? Well, f Your Majesty, got him up in a fishing net. If you caught him in a fishing net, explain why you're wetter than he is. No, I told you. Ponce de Leon died 200 years ago. Expositional arguing. The Fountain of Youth. Why is the name of this movie on Stranger Tides and not The Fountain of Youth? In case you confused it with London Fletcher. I guess the movie expects this shot of money changing hands to explain away the fact that Jack Sparrow is currently posing as a judge, but a lot more information is needed for this to make any sense. Did Jack arrive in London with gobs of cash to pay off all the guards and all the lawyers that would presumably be an obstacle for posing as a judge? Wouldn't there be at least one incorruptible person who would keep Jack from posing as a judge? And on top of all that, how does no one recognize that he doesn't remotely sound or look like the actual judge? The evidence Woman. you're finding. Guilty verdict means he'll hang. Does the foreman just get to unilaterally decide the verdict without any deliberation with the jury? Also, why does a jury even exist in this trial? It should be arranged to transport this prisoner to the Tower of London. If Jack had enough cash on him to pay off all these people so he could be a judge, why didn't he just pay people off so he and Gibbs could escape without all the fanfare? Last I heard, you were hell-bent to find the Fountain of Youth. You mean the object of sailor folklore the two sailors from the previous scene made a significant discovery about? How convenient. How did this double cross take place? Did this driver go to somebody in the British government and say, hey, Jack Sparrow's going to make a daring escape with his buddy Gibbs, but if you pay me more money than he did, I'll deliver him to you instead. Why not just pay the driver money for the information and stop Jack Sparrow before he makes the escape? Movie wastes time on Jack trying to eat a pastry while being chained to a gold chair. Some bull Someone please remove these infernal chains! You can persuade your captors to remove your chains if you're annoying enough. And also, even though they know the legend of Jack Sparrow, they've never heard about his many, many escapes. A Catholic! That's racist. You do know the way to the fountain. You could guide an expedition. I still want him to guide the expedition, even though he lost the map and he's a pirate. And a captain. Why put Barbosa in the room when you can dramatically reveal him? Also, Barbosa could have cleared up this is this the real Jack Sparrow argument within seconds, but we had to sit through two minutes of that nonsense anyway. Barbosa's qualifications for being the captain of the king's ship are communication skills, previous sailing experience, and being in all the other movies. Hailed and be rewarded with the high station you so desire. I can't tell if this overacting is getting worse as the scene progresses or if I'm just getting more annoyed by it. Jack is not immediately shot right after tapping both these guards in the nuts. Also, escaping via nut tap. And then the king's guard is thwarted by a plate of pastries. <laughs> You, movie. 
Who choreographed this escape? Rube Goldberg? This guard has a gun, but still opts for a brisk run down the stairs instead of shooting. Also, I realize we can't see Jack, but why couldn't they see Jack? He's hiding behind the table if you're facing the table, but if you're running towards the left side, Jack is just crouching behind it in plain view. I'm honestly surprised Rob Marshall didn't just walk in and hand Jack a sword and a gun. This electrical outlet, and this electrical outlet, and this HVAC vent! Okay, a few things. It takes Jack absolutely no time to get to this position. This rope designed to hold these banners of fabric is not only holding up a 175 pound man, but it's not even tightening with the additional weight. Also, no one down below sees Jack and alerts the guards who are searching for him. Does late 17th century London have a strict no snitching policy I'm unaware of? This tassel conveniently breaks at the very last second, so we can continue this cartoonish chase scene that will inevitably end with Jack getting away. Fantastic plan! Let's cut the rope so he can swing down to his escape, so the guards can chase him in the street instead of standing under him in the street so he has nowhere to go. I'm gonna rename Jack Sparrow Tony Jock Sparrow. Aw oh, man, they dragged Dame Judy Dench into this, didn't they? Is that it? Why get on the top of this carriage where you can be seen? Should have just stayed in the carriage and f Judy Dench. God damn it, why would he do this? That card is headed towards the redcoats that are chasing him. Also, the guards are suddenly thousands of dick lengths away from Jack when they were mere vagina lengths away a second ago. These two men need each other's help to carry a f***ing board. Also, if that's the case, they would not be able to hold Jack's weight, which they are currently ignoring now. This seems like a huge obstacle for the guards to overcome, but when we next see them, there's almost no fire and they're still on Jack's tail. But quite honestly, the movie can't seem to figure out where these guards are at any given moment, so the movie is perfectly content lying to us. No one sees the man obviously hanging from the prancing pony sign. Jack's dad is just hiding out near the captain's daughter, waiting to ex machina Jack out of a tough situation. I mean, how long was he waiting over there just in case this happened? I heard you're putting together a crew. Everyone in London knows Jack Sparrow is putting together a crew except for Jack Sparrow, who was too busy raising funds to bribe the entire British judicial system to keep up with pirate gossip. Those folk over there, they have a ship. You mean we don't have to leave our current location to get exactly what we need at this exact moment? Also, kind of hard to believe with all the information the King had about Jack Sparrow being in London that they never heard of the Captain's Daughter Tavern and the person recruiting sailors here. Jack's dad is Batman. Somehow the room is lit in such a way that it hides the imposter Jack Sparrow's face. It's probably why nobody who interviewed for the job noticed he looked like Penelope Cruz. When someone decides to run to a place where mere boards prevent them from falling, I consider the sword fight to be done until that person decides to walk away from it. Why even bother chasing this person? Why is every rope anyone in this franchise grabs onto strong enough and positioned in such a way it allows them to swing to their desired destination? Only one person alive knows that move. Jack is so confident in this statement, he forces this mystery person to kiss him. Also, I'm fairly confident that more than one person in the world knows how to spin around with a sword. You were the only pirate I thought I would pass for. Voice and everything? How'd you pull that off? Notice how we never heard her Jack Sparrow impersonation. I don't want to question this action because part of me approves of it, but the other part of me feels compelled to question it because it has no purpose other than revealing her cleavage, which again, I am for. So, like her blouse, I am torn. I could use a ship. If we cut out all the moments where someone tells Jack that he's looking for the Fountain of Youth, and all the times Jack says he could use a ship, we'd probably shave a solid 10 minutes off this picture. I was ready to take my vows. And you? What were you doing in a Spanish convent anyway? Chase position. More than just three redcoats came running in here, right? So what are the other guys doing? Waiting to be tapped in? Just running around the room aimlessly? We are at a disadvantage. It's this kind of thoughtful, nuanced writing that really makes this series shine. Movie perpetuates the myth that puncturing a barrel with alcoholic liquid will cause it to spew like a geyser. When we arrived at this bar, there was no indication that they were near any significant body of water. It's almost as if the environment evolves in real time based on what the plot requires of it. It's almost like these guards are saying, well, they're clearly gone forever. No need to continue in our pursuit. Okay, now where the f*** are we? It's been 20 seconds since they fell through the trap door, and now we're in a completely different location. Forcing a man to twist his own hanging rope, you must lie in your bed the way you made it. So he doesn't have to tie the noose? Why the f*** was that bit of dialogue even necessary? The map doesn't burn up immediately, so why not try and put the fire out, salvage what's there, and kill Gibbs? Is it because he pulls well in the focus groups? Is Disney trying to ensure kids never learn how to read a map? I'm no seaman, but I can't imagine the sails with giant holes in them would be super effective. Her uh, first mate is a uh, her. Uh. Yeah, about that, why was Penelope Cruz pretending to be Jack Sparrow to recruit sailors when she's the first mate on Blackbeard's ship? Does Blackbeard have such a bad reputation that he couldn't recruit anybody on his own? Or did this movie just really need some mysterious someone is impersonating Jack Sparrow nonsense to get Jack on in this adventure? Blackbeard will meet his death within a fortnight at the hands of a one-legged man. That's why he needs the fountain, Jack. Yeah, but why would finding the fountain prevent the one-legged man from killing him? As we find out, the fountain only works by taking the total years lived from one person and adding them to another person, not makes you impenetrable to stab wounds. Although, as we'll soon find out, this movie doesn't know what the fountain ritual actually does anyway. So ultimately, the answer we're looking for is f*** this movie. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to provide us an headache. Wait, you mean just now? 
After sailing this long, here are the Spaniards, who should have a huge head start on all the other expeditions. They have Ponce de Leon's book and everything, but here they are, neck and neck with the others. Be we on the proper car, Gibbs. Aye, it be proper. There's your proof. So now we kill Gibbs and follow the Spaniards? He never so much as turned his head. Maybe this is why they keep Gibbs around. His vision is so impeccable he can see what a normal man needs a telescope to see. I signed up to sail under Jack Sparrow, not some pretender. And a lady at that. Why doesn't she just keep up the Jack Sparrow routine so these idiots don't mutiny on her for being an imposter? Is it because it wouldn't be sexy enough? I'll go on. All of them. Really? All of them? There are only six swords on this whole ship? Also, considering that they just started talking about mutiny, what was the conversation like before this kid left? Okay, we're going to talk about mutiny, so we'll need swords. All right, let's send the child. You have been monstrously deceived. We are decepted then. Yes. Even Jack is getting irritated with the repetitive dialogue. Instead of choreographing some real action and fighting, movie decides to just cut, 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 cut itself to death to create the illusion that these actors can actually sword fight. If Blackbeard has rope telekinesis, then why even bother having a crew? Can he just stand on deck and command the ropes to do his bidding? Still I pray for every unfortunate soul on this hellbound vessel. Oh, come on. Florida's not that bad. Oh, this guy attended the Prometheus School of Rowing Away from Things. Also, Blackbeard wasted a shit ton of flammable accelerant to kill this one crew member. Again! God damn it. Trident carving produces no blood because the spirits of voodoo are aware of the rating this movie was shooting for. You will lead us to the fountain. So did Angelica pretend to be Jack to lure Jack onto the ship somehow? Or were they planning on making this trip without Jack? Because remember, the only reason Angelica dressed up as Jack was because she felt like he was the only pirate she could make believable. There's a whole lot missing from this backstory, and none of the explanations are good. The director said, we'll have your character eat sliced apples. It'll make you look like even more of an asshole. Mermaids! Dreadful in hunger of a flesh of man! Character in movie begins explaining things to other characters in the movie that they surely already know. So, it was about time this movie got back to its roots. And I'll tell you the ritual of the fountain. Why does she know the ritual? Is it just an essential thing she's tasked with knowing so the viewing audience can rest assured she'll be here for most of the movie? Water from the fountain of youth. The shimmering tear of a mermaid. The silver chalices of Ponce de Leon. I thought the Fountain of Youth was supposed to be a naturally occurring magical body of water. So how did Ponce de Leon figure out he needed a tear from a mermaid and silver chalices that he himself owned to make it work? The f***ing f***. Also, the movie pretty much rips off Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, because why not? With these items, you may take all the years of life from another. If that's the case, then the fountain's name is incredibly misleading. Why don't we change it to the fountain of someone else's life? Is the movie going to explain how the Black Pearl... You know what? F*** it. Can we just please get to the f***ing fountain without going down all these rabbit holes? I am truly the daughter of Blackbeard. Why did you lie about lying about being his daughter then? What purpose did that serve? They be drawn to man-made light. Sharks! Has this jackass kid not been paying attention? All they've been talking about since they got here are mermaids. Worse than sharks, boy. Both sharks and mermaids will try to eat you, but mermaids are hot and topless. They like to hear singing. You can find this on page 47 of the non-fictional text, How to F*** a Mermaid in 10 Days. Mermaids start using an attack they could have used a lot sooner than this. Also, spider maids. Jack somehow knew that mermaids would be scared of this explosion. Mermaids have breasts, but they don't have nipples because their genetics are compliant with the movie's PG-13 rating. Ever walk on the beach, look back and see your footsteps in the sand. If he says something about seeing a second set of footprints, I'm turning this shit off. Mermaids attack Barbosa's ship, but seem completely disinterested in the assholes who are already on land, which is a severe departure from what they did last night with Blackbeard's crew. Did they run out of spider webs? Also, why did they wait to attack the ship after all the main characters of this movie got to land? Oh. Now that Barbosa's ship is being sunk, how the f*** are they going to get to the next place? Or is this movie saying that White Cat Bay is the final destination, and they can walk the rest of the way? Furthermore, where are these assholes now? If it's raining on White Cat Bay and Barbosa can walk to the next place, then where did Blackbeard go where it's totally sunny? Why is it we've got to bring her along? Because tears don't keep. We need them fresh. And we also need to develop a love story between the mermaid and the Philip. Also, is this movie f***ing joking? This ritual requires fresh tears. Seriously? Who made up these rules? Do we really want to be young that badly? What is the ritual again? Water from the fountain and a mermaid's tear? And two silver chalices. One cup with a tear, one without. I'm beginning to think this movie was written by people who made those puzzle adventure games where you have to do some really convoluted shit just to advance, with no clues and no explanation. But to Ponce de Leon, the answer was clear as day. Mermaid, tears, and chalices. I hear Ponce de Leon was also a huge Zork fan. Also, which came first, the Fountain of Youth or Ponce de Leon? Sounds like he's the one who made the rules, but isn't he famous for looking for the fountain? So how did he come up with all this? 
And if it wasn't him, then how did God come up with all this? Quite complicated, is it not? If you write this kind of dialogue for your main character, that might be a hint you're in need of a second draft. She needs air! Philip is not just a clergyman, he's also a mermaid expert. You get to choose, Mr. Sparrow. Oh. Even though Blackbeard is... I'm running out of time. He still has time for Russian roulette. If the voodoo doll gives Jack the sensation of falling, then why doesn't he start drowning when the doll hits water? Dare not let it touch your skin. You'd think with the amount of money these movies continue to make, they could splurge on some better animal CGI. How much do they have to earmark for Depp's wine exactly? Well, of course she grows legs if she's not in water. Maybe that's why she never speaks. She sold her voice to an octopus drag queen lady, so she could have legs when she's on land. You are different. Right! He's young and attractive. Mermaids only eat dirty old pirates. What was clear as day a few minutes ago is now dark and foggy, as if this island changes the weather based on whatever a movie needs at a given moment. So how the f*** did Ponce de Leon's boat end up on this cliff? Was it placed there by the screenwriter to set up a precarious moment that will soon happen? Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon is buried in Puerto Rico, so I don't think he's on the right ship. Back! Back! We have to balance it out! Further proof that there is no reason for this ship to still be sitting here after 200 years. Also, how was Barbosa able to sneak onto this boat without causing balance issues if that boat's balance is so precarious? And why was Jack able to do the same without causing any issues until they started sword fighting? The Spanish. They're ahead of us, mate. Well, no shit. Their voyage wasn't filled with pointless hijinks and shenanigans. Ponce either programmed his dead body to be protective of the map for some reason, or he's still alive from drinking from the fountain water and mermaid tears. Problem is, we find out later that the fountain heals scars, so why would your body deteriorate, and why would you waste your time guarding a map in this condition? Also, I think the two of you could probably win a fight with the weird skeleton puppet. You will not torture her! Philip feels undying love for the mermaid that he's only known for a day, which just proves that love at first sight is real, as long as you're incredibly hot. Also, can we all agree that no one gives a shit about this priest-mermaid love story that begins two-thirds of the way through this movie? Just a scratch, you're a dead man in minutes. So Barbosa keeps his super deadly sword drawn, dramatically raising the risk that he could accidentally stab himself, not to mention giving Jack a reason to ask about it, so we'll know about the frog poison. Now what? Is Barbosa directing this question to Jack or the director? Came for me. I... You're different. In that you're not a gross middle-aged pirate man, nor are you Angelica, who clearly has a thing going with Jack. Process of elimination love is still love. Tears of joy. They say these be the more potent anyway. Where are you getting this information? How many conversations about mermaid tears are you having with your colleagues? Is there a book to consult? The Spaniards tie up Jack and Barbosa to trees that are so far away they are in perfect escaping range. Also, why did Barbosa have to go along with this Fountain of Youth thing just to get back at Blackbeard? I'm sure there were ways much simpler than infiltrating the British Navy to find the magical fountain that Blackbeard is also looking for. In order to free himself from the ropes, Jack is going to climb this entire palm tree. Somehow get over the top of the palm tree and I guess slide back down the tree like a fireman. Or find some way to cartoonishly bend the tree down. You can't just have him emerge from the leaves completely free. How did he get over those leaves? Is it a magical rope that can pass through leaves? How many magical ropes are in this movie? Movie did in fact go for some cartoonish tree bending. Jack, through the power of editing, makes it past all these guards using only a rope and manages to tie them all to a tree because art imitates life and life is stupid. Jack and Gibbs went through the trouble of catching a pig so they could tie the chalices to it and make it run away if Blackbeard didn't meet their demands. Seems like there would be an easier way to do this, but I'm not making a movie to fund my future Star Wars acquisition. Thankfully, Jack noticed this drop of water so that he could eventually look through it, while at the same time looking directly at the X that marks the spot. So why was that single drop of water falling up when this giant pool of water behaves like a normal pool of water? Was that just an indicator drop that they are headed in the right direction? Aqua de Vida. You have to say these words because obviously after getting mermaid tears, locating chalices, and actually finding the location of the Fountain of Youth in the first place, you clearly haven't done enough. Kill them all! <laughs> these people somehow hear Jack over all the noise, and all of them are stopped by what Jack has to say. Hand it over. Is that tear still fresh? I will not have that smile on your face as I strike you down. Blackbeard's in a tough spot. On one hand, if he doesn't kill Barbosa, then Barbosa's gonna kill him. On the other hand, if he does kill Barbosa, that means the stupid ass prophecy is wrong. And that will f up my whole world if a prophecy in a movie is wrong again. Only God can grant eternal life, not this pagan water. If the Spaniards came out simply to destroy the Fountain of Youth, then why didn't they just go ahead and do that? They had a tremendous lead on everyone getting to this island, and they knew the others were coming for it. Furthermore, couldn't they simply just destroy the chalices and call it a day, since you need to do all sorts of petty sh** to make the Fountain of Youth work anyway? Looks like the Spanish Inquisition went to the Lois Lane School of Disposing of Things. Destroy this profane temple! If he really thinks that all this is bullsh**, 
Paganism? How does he explain the floating water? First off, there's apparently a mermaid route to the Fountain of Youth. Second off, why did Serena use her freedom to swim toward the fountain for any reason? I mean, maybe she thought she could save the heartthrob from Hunger Games catching fire. But she just gives the chalices to Jack and pieces out. So her appearance here smells terribly of Ex Machina and Tuna. Again, I've gotta ask, why does this work? The rules have been stated clearly. The fountain adds years to your life, but there's never any explanation about healing, existing scars, or death blows. I think this movie is so Last Crusade, it forgot what the power of this water really is. I mean, she totally eats him, right? This is not over! <laughs> Any idea how to get her out? We shall need a crossbow, an hourglass, three goats. One of us must learn to play the trumpet whilst the other one goes like this. Maybe this movie is making fun of itself, but this is no sillier than what we just watched. And just as tedious. A heaping load of bullshit washes up on the island where Angelica is stranded. How in the world did bull travel this far? And again I ask, how did Jack not drown? Low goes, low goes before your lame movie. What are these tally marks keeping track of? They obviously aren't days, and if he's keeping track of something, wouldn't you at least add up the tallies for each month? This kid ties a rock to his ankle so that he'll be sunk into the sea, land on the Flying Dutchman, and cause the ship to float to the surface. How the f*** does he know this will work? Also, I know we're supposed to remember all the stuff at the end of Pirates of the Caribbean, the curse of the dead stranger's chest at the world's end, but are you telling me that in one visit, Will was able to tell Henry all about the Dutchman's whereabouts and how to get it to the surface? Movie severely overestimates my desire to keep track of which ship is which after four movies. They know you're here. The real question is, why aren't they already on deck? The ship made a pretty dramatic rise to the surface. Also, aren't you the captain of this ship now? Why does it matter if they know he's here? I thought you took over after the third movie. I want you to come home. And this kid really feels a lot of love for a guy he's seen one time in his life. Also, why did he come here and risk his life just to tell his dad he knows something that can break his curse without getting that thing first? Henry. I'm sorry. So, about those guys you were worried about a minute ago? Did they get lost on the way to do whatever you were worried about them doing? So despite it not having any kind of anchor and being pushed aside by the wake of the Flying Dutchman's ascent, this tiny boat is still just hanging out, waiting for little Henry. No, don't do it! Don't do it! Back in the day, human hearing was so good they could detect someone yelling over all the cannon fire and hundreds of men shouting. I've spent my life studying the myths of the sea. I know every legend and every curse. And I sold them all to Disney so they could make more god-awful sequels in this franchise for at least the next 50 years. No, no. I'm sorry, sir. This one is clearly disturbed. Why haven't you tackled him yet? Why has he been allowed to speak this long? Pirates of the Caribbean at World War Z's end. Do you know this pirate? You're looking for him? Of all the jail joints and all the ships and all the seas, he walks into mine. <laughs> for too many years, the triangle has cursed us. The key to our escape is Jack Sparrow and the compass which he holds. Jesus Christ, the setup for this movie is no different than the first one. And really, how many of these movies are going to have some cursed ship with a bunch of dead, semi-dead, and undead dudes on it? Tell him I want to behold the daylight again. Because in this very movie, he'll give away his compass, which will somehow bring me daylight and do nothing else in particular. Death will come straight for him. Honestly, Henry could simply not tell Jack about Salazar at all and he'd be totally okay. There's absolutely no deal struck here, no danger. So why did he ever need to tell Jack about this encounter? The men tell no tales. Roll frigates. Movie reminds you of which movie this is 13 minutes in, but I'll forget five minutes later anyway. Accused of practicing witchcraft. Before you die, do you have anything to confess? I confess that I am not a witch, that I am a woman of science. This is either the late 1700s or the early 2020s. I can't figure out which. And I confess that while we've been talking, I picked this lock. And there's absolutely no guards who will stop me after I escape my cell. HOLD YOUR FIRE! Drunk bimbo ex machina. Also, what a crazy scenario this movie's come up with. Jack apparently had no trouble getting into this safe, managed to take a sex partner into the safe with him, and they apparently drank and f***ed on the money. All while this crew waited until the bank unveiled the safe the next morning to try and steal it? Do I have that right? Also, safe sex. THERE'S A WOMAN WITH HIM IN THE <laughs> No, there wasn't. Even if she somehow buried beneath that gold, she certainly would have been awakened by him landing directly on top of her as he rolled out. She appeared out of thin air. Maybe she's the witch they're looking for. SHOOT HIM! They don't. Also, am I the only one who's rooting for the British to kill Jack once and for all? It takes a lot to make this American root for 18th century British people, but five movies like this will do it. <laughs> no. Also, because nobody likes money, everyone stands here and watches the bank literally drift away while also not killing an even easier to kill Jack Sparrow. That was no part of the plan. Why is there a rope just lying here on the floor? It wasn't being used for the heist. It seems only to be here to give Jack yet another cheap escape from an unescapable situation. No woman's ever handled my Herschel. This would never be the first thing he says to her, or the way he says it. Ever. Forced double entendres are the weakest double entendres. Also, what is she looking for through a telescope in the middle of the day? What if it was pointed at the sun? Careful. 
Play with your Herschel too much, you might go blind. There's no way this bank makes this turn unless it's on a track. For Pete's sake, Fast Five was less ridiculous, and when you're taking physics lessons from the Fast franchise, it may be time to call it a day. Have either of the four of you seen my bank? Didn't the bank just come through here? It left Jack behind a minute ago, so why would it be coming anywhere near him? Normally, this type of thing would break the sin counter, but it's seen worse. This thing's been through five Transformers, 17 Fast and Furiouses, four and a quarter of these movies, and traveled through time, so this ain't no thing. Black Pearl has never left me side. Honestly, I don't know which is more ridiculous. That the movie thinks I remember why this ship is in his pocket, or that it thinks I even care. The pirate Barbosa rules the seas now. I sure am glad you clarified that it's the pirate Barbosa, because I would have thought you meant Fred Barbosa, the Tuna King. Face it, Jack. Bad luck dogs you day and night. Gibbs clearly hasn't seen the other four movies, or at least the last ten minutes of this one. Watch it, Seagull. That's our job. My father is trapped by such a curse. You're aware that curses are not supported by science. Neither are ghosts. So you have gone mad. But you came here to talk to this guy about the Trident, which you do believe in, but you don't believe in ghosts or curses. So Poseidon, possible, curses, not. Got it. But this map has never been seen nor read by any man. Luckily, I'm a woman. Oh, so the map is cocklocked then? Makes sense. This is the diary of Galileo Galilei. He spent his life searching for the Trident. Galileo was a pretty smart dude, and we find out later that basically, you just have to follow some stars to find it. You mean, with all the information he had, he couldn't do that? Give me the bottle. Shouldn't the bartender have to accept this trade before any of this reverse the curse nonsense actually starts to happen? For some reason, Sauron dies again in this movie. Also, if my memory serves, it's not like this is the first time Jack has given this thing to someone else. Why didn't that set things in motion? Why is this bartender so eager to grab the compass? Does he know what it is? Is it an earthquake? Because if I think something you're trying to give me is causing an earthquake, I'm sending you the hell away from my bar. Capitan! What's happening? Jack Sparrow has given away the compass. Oh. What they're free from is anyone's guess. I suppose it could mean constant darkness, but everyone on this boat is still cursed and dead-looking, and can't touch land, so what the f*** are they free from? Luckily for the plot of this movie, Karina was put into a cell, complete with a moon roof, so that she could read the map that you can only read under a blood moon. Psst, I need to speak with you. Can we talk about how Sparrow set this up? Later we see he used some sort of hay to create the shape, but what did he bind it with? Stand it up with? How does it balance? Impossible scare Sparrow is impossible. Does mommy ever ask about me? She called my name in her sleep. Gross. You do still want us to kind of actually like Jack Sparrow, right? Movie? Hello? And you could be the one who holds the sea and with it become all that you once were. The great... I believe this is exactly how Johnny Depp approaches this character now. He calls it method sleeping. The trident can never be found. Funny, after four movies, Barbosa still thinks stuff like finding the trident is impossible, but all the other mind-blowing bullshit in these movies was possible. The dead are conquering the sea, unable to step on dry land. But why? They told us Davy Jones could only step on dry land every ten years, and that was a rule specific to the Flying Dutchman. But apparently, no dead men at sea can touch dry land. Arbitrary curse rules continue to be arbitrary. How did you get this? I have my ways. That's screenwriter speak for we have no f***ing clue either. Also, if this woman is an honest to god witch, why isn't she dead? They were ready to kill not a witch Karina almost immediately. Time to make a deal with the dead. This witch told him that the cost of entering this room would be blood, but she just gives the compass to him without any payment because something something in the past. Uncle Jack! Jackie boy! I can't believe they got Pete Best to play Jack's uncle. Why are these guards even allowing this? We strip away all human rights and decency here, but hey, if you need to have a conversation with another inmate while we are dragging you somewhere, by all means, go ahead. Quiet! The biggest proof that she may actually be a witch is that this works. Most of you have the mind of a goat. Pardon me, sir. I hate to bring up stuff like this in a movie filled with pirates, witches, zombies, curses, and tridents, but would this town square really have dual executions going on, with one a hanging and another a beheading? Is this Tecapalooza? I believe I was making a point. If you could just be patient. No! This goes on for some time, and none of the kill-happy Brits decides to kill someone and end this stupid scene and movie. I guess Henry knew there would be some sort of delay in killing Karina and Jack, or else this rescue attempt would have been super late. Enough! Kill them both! This random spectator would be amazing at cinema sins. No, sir. I'm just a diversion. Diversion divulsion. <laughs> Gillotees. You have a sword. She's being hung with a rope. Swords can cut ropes. Jeez, do I really have to spell this out for you? Also, pretty sure that rope is long enough that Little Miss Can't Be Wrong could just step off that trap door. You know, if she was really worried about dying and stuff. If she can be caught here, with that much slack still in the rope, this hanging was never going to work. Unless the goal was simply to break her ankles when she hit the ground. Speed come crawling back, traitor! The Turner boy gave us ten silver pieces to save your neck! How did Henry know who Jack's crew was? 
Or did he just stumble upon some people who would do this job and it just happened to be Jack's old crew? Considering where your left hand is, I'd say we're more than that. You're holding everything but my word. How exactly did he catch her if his hand is inappropriately placed? Did he go to the Weinstein School of Catching Things? Then I bestow upon you the honor of saving me for a small donation. You expect us to pay you to save you? Apparently, yes, that's what the movie is saying. And there is no explanation for why this works. Ah! How much of this idiot shit are we supposed to put up with? Did someone take a poll? Well, look at this. If I kill the coward, the witch hangs. Then do it already. You really think we can find the trident? Seriously, these people came back to work for Jack because of some mythical trident shit. Why are they tying these people up? Because by God, if you tell me that it's a Fifty Shades sequel called Fifty Shades of Greybeard... The map is there! Karina expects a bunch of dumb assholes to know what she means by pointing to the sky. Sorry! <laughs> if he's lucky! Okay, sure, they didn't throw him in the seat, but surely if he landed like that, he's at least got a concussion and might be on his way to bleeding out. Also, pretty sure a full-size human being landing from 15 feet into a wooden boat would make enough noise to give away the ruse. I want to know where that pirate is going with that witch. Jesus, Karina wrote all the directions on her prison wall? That's f***ing amazing. So we've both spent our lives searching for our fathers. Well, no. You've seen your dad and you know where he is. You even stupidly nearly drowned yourself to see him. But I kind of admire that you're looking for any reason to find something in common with this woman. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not there. Skip! The sun is up. And so is your type. We've seen Salazar's undead army immediately kill people when he taps his sword, but this guy decides, nah, I'll just put my sword to his throat. Maybe he'll talk his way out of it. There's no mercy. There's no mercy, the creed of apple-eating assholes everywhere. This type of bullet physics was disproven by Mythbusters, but I guess since Mythbusters didn't exist back then, those bullets didn't get the message. Scrawny Depp. Also, young Johnny Depp CGI mixed with another actor basically looks like what happens if you told a computer what the young version would look like. But young Johnny Depp doesn't look like this, really. Take a look at a picture from Nightmare on Elm Street, or 21 Jump Street, or even Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. Well, maybe not that last one. One ship was trying to escape through the smoke. One that, despite the clear and decisive victory by Salazar, still had a full crew and sustained no damage. You surrender to me now, and I'll let you live! Ah, the magic of movies. You see, Salazar is actually a good guy in this story, even though he didn't want to show mercy to some filthy pirates after the battle was over. Jack is definitely the bad guy here, but because we supposedly love Jack, the story's flipped on its head. So now that we have this convenient backstory for Salazar and young Jack, how exactly did Salazar know it was the compass that cursed him again? And furthermore, how did the compass curse it? Jack got the job. Damn! Barbosa was saved at the last minute by a Jack Sparrow origin story. I rule pirates this stupid. Well, actually, the first movie was pretty clever. Oh, you mean the people. Carry on, then. So you know what would be cool? Half-dead skeleton sharks chasing our heroes to shore. But why would Salazar even have sharks? Didn't you hear me? Skeleton sharks! Who's gonna even care? CinemaSense cares, motherfuckers. CinemaSense cares. Also, I hate to say it, but the sharks from Finding Nemo look more realistic than these do. You have to swim for it. I'll distract them. Distract them? Aren't they magically honed in on Jack Sparrow? Why would clothes distract them? And why haven't they smashed his boat into smithereens yet? If they could do that, then why didn't they do it from the very beginning? Why send zombie sharks? F***ing f***. They're unable to step on land. Well, unless they're also standing on some sort of moisture. Then they're totally okay. The spirit world must have a terrible time figuring out how much is enough water in the can't stand on land scenario. Help me! Help her! <laughs> Cool traps, bro. So, how did you set that one up on a three second delay? You promised me Jack's blood! But Jack be trapped! He can never escape that island! He's the land! Why does Salazar waste time killing all of Barbosa's underlings, and not Barbosa himself, if he's so mad about Jack being on land? Wake up, Sparrow. It's time to pay your debt. Oh, of course, they crash on an unknown, uncharted, unreachable island, and there are pirates there who know Jack and have a beef with him. Congratulations. It's your wedding day. God! Damn it! Oh, what are those things? This movie wants to be 90 minutes, but like the gluttony victim in Seven, someone kept feeding it until it burst. You like seafood, do you? I'm surprised there wasn't a real-life mutiny on this set when the actors and crew were told, we need to spend an entire week filming Jack Sparrow's fake wedding. Even if it was just a day or a few hours, it was too much. The only safe place is the land. Why are we going away from the land? This brings up another question. Why can Salazar step on a boat that just happens to be on water and still be considered on water if he's stepping on wood? Why didn't he get a couple glass boxes, fill them with seawater, and use them as shoes? We had something sharp. I could pick that lock. You're not gonna find anything okay. sharp in here. Cue the Fairly Brothers, gross toenail scene. We all know this f***ing toenail shouldn't be able to break them out of this cell, but man, are we not entertained. Also, they'll break out of this cell and quietly steal a rowboat from this British ship without a f***ing soul knowing about it. These bumbling pirates are quite amazing off-screen. Where did you get that from, Missy? I know this book. Oh, come on. No, you don't. You remember a f***ing book? you. Also, this is his daughter, isn't it? F*** me. 
Yes, we get it. She's his daughter. One more convenient, confusing, and convoluted story point to try and obscure that this plot is actually thinner than a skeleton pirate's shadow. Salazar decides to destroy the British ship, but I thought he hated pirates, not other people who hate pirates. Why not take on the Black Pearl in tandem? I was gonna send this, but no, Jack probably can jump on all these wet cannons in the rain and not slip once. Why would I ever question that? Of course, this ship is cursed and can do crazy things. But why is this glorified hood ornament just now taking part in this battle? Also, why didn't Salazar just turn his ship into pirate Pac-Man like he's done so many times to so many other ships in this movie? He clearly doesn't care what kills Jack as long as he dies, so why go through all this trouble? Whoa! After seeing Jack escape so many situations, he finally gets rammed by a f***ing cannon with the weight of an entire ship thrusting it, and he survives. Karina! Henry! Look! Congrats! You found the secret island! But how exactly did you survive Salazar's ship for the last ten minutes? This crew has killed everything with ease and impunity, and actually cut that British ship in half with a single bite. What is taking them so long to finish off this weak band of mortals? The island! Sure, you need to get off the ship, but you can't spare a half second to spear Sparrow through the heart before you go? Please? They took Henry! The Titan be all that can save him now. Yes, the magical MacGuffin awaits. It better have a 42 printed on it somewhere, because that thing is apparently the answer to life, the expanded universe, and everything. So, the ruby she's using here was on Galileo's diary, but where did Galileo get it? Poseidon was the one who made the map that no man can read. So that means he would have broken off this piece of ruby himself. And then what? He gave it to somebody? He chucked it into the sea? And somehow, someone found that ruby and thought to himself, hmm, this ruby, I bet it's the key to finding Poseidon's trident. I will dedicate my life to it. Poseidon's island is a dick to people who figured out his stupid map. Once you possess the living, there's no coming back. You will be trapped in his body forever. Wait, so they can go on land if they possess someone? Setting aside that it's yet another new rule that we are just now hearing about, how do they even know these rules? Does every curse come with a handbook? Welcome to your curse. Here are a few things you need to know before you get started. What is it this year with movies where the protagonists go through all this sh** to find an artifact, only to have to go through more sh** after they've done all the hard stuff? This and Transformers 5 are the same movie, basically. What does the Trident even do? So, he was able to unpossess Henry's body, which we were told was impossible without the Trident, but his skin condition hadn't cleared up one bit. So, in its current state, it can take care of one curse, but not others? <laughs> All the power of Poseidon at Salazar's fingertips, and this still doesn't kill Jack. Oh, piss off! What did she just do there? It looked like she was reaching into the water, but why? Did she give the oncoming cursed pirates a hand signal? Was she busting their barnacles? Does anybody understand anything about what's going on here? This movie isn't even trying to keep it a secret that it's one big flushing toilet. To release the power of the sea, all must divide. If the Triton holds all the power, then... Then every curse is held inside. What? How do you make that leap of logic? The idea that this trident could break curses was one thing, but that it stores curses? The trident, an incredible artifact of power wielded by a sea god, cannot penetrate the defenses of Galileo's diary. Divide! Break! Break the trident and you'll break, break every curse of sea! I've never seen such nonsense get figured out this quickly. Also, now that they're going to break the trident to break the curse, how do curses get broken from here on out? Are curses eliminated forever? So the water is now an issue for you, but the half a head thing, that's still cool? Why is the water returning so slowly? Is there some sort of gradual gravity field release? Why wouldn't it just release immediately? This tattoo is so ridiculous, it might as well have said, For Karina, the daughter I gave away to an orphanage. And it would have been no worse. I mean, this special map that no man can read is tattooed on his body for a lame parentage reveal? Why not just have Mori Povich drop into the middle of the sea and reveal it? How is Barbosa this far above them? Didn't he knock them off the chain? Movie doesn't know how to gravity. You all right? Oh, totally. Just another one of those find out you have a father in the same moment he's sacrificing his life for you days. You? What did you do that for? Just checking it's truly, you're not still a ghost. Run, Henry, as fast and as far away from her as your sea legs will take you. Run now! After breaking the trident, Will's curse was lifted, and this movie didn't even show it on screen. A big moment for a legacy character. In fact, why isn't he already back on land? The curse was lifted and what? He still had to do more work? Let me tell you a tale. A tale of the greatest treasure known to man. That's a tale I want to hear. <laughs> I just watched it. No, you don't. Elizabeth didn't tag along with Henry to greet Will because she knew her surprise cameo would delight the five people still left in the theater. Captain Jack Sparrow on deck! Seriously, what's changed? You didn't get one red cent on your Poseidon adventure. You left Jack because of the lack of money. Nothing's different, but yeah, all hail Jack Sparrow. Just in case you forgot that you just watched a fifth movie squeezed out of a 16-minute amusement park ride. Post credits, it was a dream, but was it nonsense, completely undermines entire film by revealing that claw-handed, tentacle face guy is still somehow cursed, and also not dead. And also, who the hell even cares anymore? Well, without doubt, the worst pirate I've ever heard of. Tortuga. You will never find me. More wretched hive of scum and villainy. Bye.
Wiser. I can't believe they went with the frogs. Louis. Our audition was flawless. Louis. We did the look. Huh? We did the tongue thing. Mm-hmm. That was great. Louis. Frogs sell beer. No, listen to him. Who said that? Who the f said that? I'm the flying Dutchman. I'm the flying Dutchman. I mean, I think I hear something. I must add that Lady Catherine will thoroughly approve when I speak to her of your modesty, economy, and other amiable qualities. Sir, I am honoured by your proposal, but I regret that I must decline it. I know ladies don't seek to seem too easy. Mr. Collins, I am perfectly serious. I would cut off your head, dwarf, if it stood but a little higher from the ground. You would die before your stroke fell. The story opens on these mysterious explosions. Nobody knows what's causing them, but it's upsetting all the buffalo. So the military are called in to solve the mystery. You forgot the octopus. No, no, I'm saving that for my big underwater climax. Bring out today's one. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus! 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 Lord Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh. The skipper has yet to put a single crab on board. The only thing he's captured, another shellacking of dangerous ice. You are captain now. I'm the captain now. Come and play with us. Come and play with us, Danny. Well, I don't want to be a pirate! Please, there's still hope. Again! Aren't you motherfucker? You made your point! Let him pull back! Who are you? We're extremely hot chicks with large breasts. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <coughs> I regret nothing! This land is hereby forever claimed in the glorious name of His Majesty, King George! <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! <laughs> Hello, James. Welcome. Do you like the island? My grandmother had an island. Nothing to boast of. We could walk around it in an hour. But still, it was, it was a paradise for us. I'm looking for a pirate. Jack Sparrow. Bugger off. Psst. I need to speak with you. She was a fine ship. Buddy, hope you find your dad. That's no ship, sir. It's a space station. What are you? I'm Batman. I'd like to take his his face. Oh. You're a witch. I'm not a witch. I'm not a witch. But you are dressed as one. They dressed me up like this. But